Hello, hello, thanks for stopping by. This is Boulder Dash for the NES, released by Data East in 1990. But the original was released back in 1983 for a bunch of different home PCs. I think the first time I played this one was on the Atari 800 XL computer. It was also on the C64 Mini. It came as a pack-in game, and it's excellent. I already did a review on that one a while back. If you have any interest in older games and systems, I think the C64 Mini, and of course Boulder Dash, is pretty great. I found this NES version at a flea market, and after popping it in, it's good, but I find I have mixed feelings about it. It's definitely not a junk game for the NES, but I have to compare it to a game version that I really like, which is the one on the Commodore 64. This is a puzzle game, and at its core, I think it's simple enough. You guide a character, Rockford, digging through Earth looking for gems. When you get the correct amount of gems within the time limit, an exit appears. Get to the exit to get to the next level. Seems simple enough. But you're digging underground through dirt, mostly dirt, it's not all dirt. There's an outline of the level, which is probably bedrock, and that doesn't move or get destroyed. But you get boulders scattered throughout the level. When you dig underneath a boulder, the boulder is going to stay in place if you are directly under it. But as soon as you move away, the boulder drops. In this regard, the boulders are also going to have basic physics. If you clear out dirt to one side of a boulder, you could either push it in that direction, or you could have another boulder roll down over it. It all depends on placement, of course. And you're going to get accustomed to these basic physics early on, and then you're going to proceed to forget them. And you're going to start getting yourself crushed by boulders. That's what's going to happen. Always does. You're going to get different types of boulders as you move forward, and you're going to start seeing creatures as well. Creatures are going to have different behaviors depending on what they are. Some are going to explode when you drop boulders on them. Some are going to explode into gems. One enemy is this growing amoeba, and if you manage to trap it within a series of boulders, and it can't expand anymore, it will just explode into gems. It could also make other creatures explode according to the NES manual, but I haven't been able to do that yet. I'm not that great with this particular enemy. Some of the creatures you're just going to have to avoid, and some you're going to be forced to crush and kill. In this regard, I guess it's a little like Dig Dug. You can dig a path around a level, you open up a section, and then when the creature comes chasing you, maybe you can manipulate them under a falling rock and crush them that way. In some stages, you can just avoid creatures, but in others, you're forced to interact. Some levels, you might have to collect, say, 10 gems, but only 5 gems are visible. This means you have to do something on the level to transform something into a gem, usually killing your creature. In terms of puzzle difficulty, I think this one is actually pretty difficult from the start. It's definitely tricky. There's just not a lot of ramp up. By the third level in stage one, you can easily put yourself in a position to get trapped. When you get trapped, you have to wait out the clock and die just to start over. The second stage, these come in groups of four. The second stage is an ice stage and it has some really frustrating puzzles in it. By the time you're we're literally talking five and six puzzles into this game and some of them can get really rough. They really make you pay attention here and figure things out. Stage two, three stopped me cold in my boots for quite some time. The controls are simple overall. You're going to use the directional pad to walk around. You can push a boulder if there's nothing on the other side of the boulder. You can dig away dirt, pick up gems, that sort of stuff. If you press the A or B button, you can keep your character in place and you can interact with the next square if you press on the directional. It just lets you interact without moving. This might let you pick up a gem without moving into that space. It might let you push a rock without moving behind it. That sort of thing. It can be useful. The game basics are the same across all versions, at least the ones that I've played, in terms of how it handles. But when you look at the NES card itself and how they've built the game, there are definitely some differences. We're going to get a different splash screen at the beginning. The graphics are clearly different. They, they work for the NES. And you get a totally different music track. We're talking this sort of upbeat NES fare. It feels more like a happy tune to me, and I guess it works well for the NES, but I don't think it's as good as the Commodore synth track that we get. I just, I'm really accustomed to how the Commodore sound went. But this version, it also lets you select the color of your avatar, which is not particularly important, but it, it's nice to have. It's different. And this one also gives you the opportunity to enter in passwords to jump to specific areas. This will certainly save you time in the long run, and I'm also happy that the passwords are not gigantic strings of characters. I know there are plenty of NES games that make you put in like 40 characters to get to, to another level. Not here. That's a relief. 
but in comparison the Commodore version lets you select any level from the get-go, so maybe it's a bit of a step back. We also get an overworld screen, which is something I wasn't expecting, and it kind of reminds me of Super Mario Bros. 3. Don't think it's as detailed, but the comparison is there. You start out in these little island sections, and you have to complete all four levels in that section before you can move on to the next one. You can choose them in any order. Once you solve the levels and you move on to the next zone, it's of course going to get a little bit harder, and it's usually a different theme. The second one is going to be ice, the third one is going to be the desert. It works. Now, the little guy you control also looks different. That's probably important to point out. In the original version, you run around with this little creature guy who kind of looks like a mole or maybe an alien. We got a little guy with the hard hat here. Yeah, he looks fine for the NES, and the animations are cute enough. I don't personally prefer him, though. I guess I'm just sort of enamored with the original. As far as the level design goes, I recognize a handful of the first levels as being the exact same. I can't confirm that every level is going to be the same, but I'm going to imagine they probably are. These levels also have a timer, and that's actually something that's going to become more important as you move forward. It's not unusual for you to get to a new level, and then you spend your time poking around the level to figure out how to beat it, and then when you actually start to proceed, you realize you took too much time waiting, and now you don't have enough to actually complete the level. You're going to have to do these over and over again just to get through. Like I said, the game can be pretty tricky. I mean, you're going to be worrying about the layout of the level and all the different things that can kill you. There are a lot of pieces potentially moving here. What might look like a simple layout might take some serious forethought to get through. I imagine when you play this game, like me, you're going to feel good on certain levels and then get really frustrated when you accidentally trap yourself underneath a boulder. It's something that's not actually very hard to do. The NES graphics are good and it handles just fine. These are all proper handling and graphics for the era, for a decent game anyway, but I just don't feel like it's that much better than the original versions I already played. Those are pretty simple, yeah, but in terms of graphics, this one isn't that much more complex. There's also a more modern version, apparently. I caught a glimpse of this online. It has some really new graphics, but it also seemed like it might have some really different gameplay as well. I think you can get it on the PlayStation 4, and based on what I saw, I don't have much interest in tracking that one down yet. Having better graphics for a game like this, it just feels really unnecessary. Apparently somebody recently, or in the last couple of years maybe, even made a version for the Intellivision. I thought that was interesting. I don't have that particular system, but it's kinda neat to know that the game is available. Well, that's all I have today for Boulder Dash for the NES. If this is your type of video, please feel free to like and subscribe and all that good stuff, and thanks for stopping by to take a look. Hope to catch you on another video.